In this session, we are going to focus on path analysis and process. We are going to take the example of path analysis and process from Smart PLS. Now, we are taking it from sample projects. If you click here, the example is automatically loaded onto your workspace. Now we've got the complete data and the reduced data. Now, if you've got the trial or professional license, you can use this data set. Now, if you've got limited access, you can use this data set. Now, click on model one and here is our sample. And we've got an independent variable, a dependent variable, one mediator, one moderator, and some control variables. Now, how do we add control variables? Let's say we've got some control variables in our data set. And let me remove this one. So here, you see on the toolbar, you've got control variables or control variable link. Click on it. Now, once you click on your canvas, you will have this text box where you will enter the name of the control variable. Now, in this case, I'm going to keep it control one. Press enter. Now it's red. And why it's red? Because it does not have any indicators. So I'm going to click here and add the indicator here. Drag and drop onto this square and you've got control. Now the control is automatically linked to your endogenous variables. Now in this case, Y and the mediator. Now, how do we interpret this? Now this actually is a process model. It's not a PLS SCM model. It's not a regression model or CBSCM model. It's a process model based on the process macro that we used to see in SPSS. Now, the advantage of using process in smart in PLS or smart PLS software is that it gives you that liberty where you can have multiple independent and multiple dependent variables with multiple controls, multiple moderators and mediators at the same time. Now, what I'm going to do is the next step, save it. Let's say go to calculate bootstrapping. Normally 5,000 to 10,000 is recommended. For now, we are, we are just going to keep it to 500. And let's say bias corrected and accelerated bootstrap, two tailed and start. Now here are our results. Now, these are the P values. Look at this structural model. So all these are your P values. So first of all, path coefficients. Here, the mediator to Y, which relationships are significant. Now, all of them are significant except for the impact of Z, that is your moderator, on the mediator. Now here, Z is moderating the relationship between X and the mediator. So when there is a moderator, it moderates a relationship. And when it's moderating a relationship, the moderator is linked directly to the dependent variable of that relationship or the endogenous variable, in this case, the mediator. Now, it's not linked here. It's automatically linked. The software does it for you. And whether Z moderates the relationship or not, well, yes, it moderates the relationship. So which relationship is it moderating? It's moderating the relationship between X and the mediator. And what is the relationship between X and mediator? It's positive. And here you see there is a positive sign as well. So if there is no sign, this means it's a positive sign. So Z strengthens the relationship between X and the mediator. The positive relationship between X and the mediator. So how does it strengthen that relationship? Now it's a very good idea that you go for slope analysis if your moderation results are significant in order to better understand and this is very true and very important if you've got a categorical moderator as in this case so where is our slope so if you go back here go to calculate path analysis start and slope analysis now if you look here Earlier we mentioned that the relationship between X and the mediator, Z strengthens this relationship. So Z strengthens the positive relationship between X and the mediator. So in this case, if you look at this green line, it's much steeper in comparison to this red line. 
Now, what do these lines mean? Z at zero means that lower level of Z, that is the moderator at lower level, and Z at one means that the moderator at a higher level. Now, in this case, if you have higher Z score, this will strengthen the relationship. That is, if you increase X, this will lead to a sharper increase in the mediator. So at higher score of Z, at higher level of Z, if you increase X, there is a higher or change or, in, or significant increase in the mediator. But if you look at this red line, at low level of Z, at low level of the moderator, although you are increasing X at the same rate, but it's not leading to a similar increase in the mediator as was the case with Z at 1. So it's always recommended in order to develop a better understanding of how a variable moderates a relationship, please look at the slope. And once you are done with this, let's go back and look at this. This is obviously, this is moderated mediation as well. So the indirect effect would change with changing Z. This is what we have hypothesized in this particular example. So if we go back and again open the bootstrapping results, open full results, Okay, so where is that moderated mediation? So if you look here, specific indirect effects, Z into X to mediator to Y. This is moderated mediation. and This is significant. This means that the impact of X on Y through the mediator actually changes with the changing value of Z. Now, if you look here, it's zero. So this shows that the indirect effect of X on Y through the mediator will be stronger for a higher score of Z. Now again, let's look at the conditional effects or indirect effects. Look at this. So at 1, it's higher. This, this actually shows that the impact of X on Y through the mediator will be stronger if you have higher value of Z or the moderator at a higher value or for a higher score of the moderator. This is what we said earlier as well. Now, if you have got low Z score, the indirect effect is weaker, although significant, but it's weaker. And look at the difference of the indirect effect. It changes a lot. And this was significant. How did I find out that it was significant? Look at this. It was significant. Now, what about the control variables? Where are your control variables? So, all of them are significant except for this one so control 2 on y is insignificant now again your control variables uh, could be your age gender job rank or other variables now if the control variable has multiple categories and it's on nominal scale then obviously you'll have to create dummy variables so this is or rather this was an example of process in smart pls with the sample data from the smart PLS projects and it was a very simple process model of moderated mediation and with the inclusion or analysis of a moderator and mediator. Now let's look at this one as well. We missed out on this one. So mediation sig significant. Yes, the mediation was significant. So we can say the impact of X on Y through mediator was significant. So there is mediation. Now what type of mediation, whether it was full or partial, so the indirect effect is significant. Now this is the first thing that you have to do. Next, whether the impact of X on Y was significant or not. Look at this path coefficients. X on Y significant. So both di direct and indirect paths are significant. So when both direct and in di indirect paths are significant, this means partial mediation. This means that some of the impact of X on Y is passing through the mediator, whereas some of the impact is passing directly as well. If the direct effect, this effect, was insignificant, let's assume it was insignificant, and the indirect effect was significant, this means full mediation because all the impact of X on Y now is passing through the mediator. So this is how you can develop a basic understanding of the process in Smart PLS. Thank you very much.